Color theory is a deeply complex subject that is nearly impossible to master. Just kidding, it's easy. Don't believe me, I'll prove it. Keep watching and you'll learn a few simple tricks to make your models more vibrant and cohesive. Okay, I have to come clean. Some of the tricks in this video I haven't actually tried before, at least not for mini painting, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna work and I'll explain why as we go. So today we're painting this plague marine. This model is the reason I'm making this video. This is what it looked like, and it's not terrible, but uh, to me, it's something just wasn't clicking. It took me a while to figure out why, but I finally did, and I'll explain it in just a few moments. I decided I needed to start over, and so I stripped the model, and here we are. All right, let's get into it. I'm going for a pretty classic look for this guy with the green armor, bronze gold trim, and deep reddish purple fleshy bits. So what I'll do first might seem odd. I'm gonna base coat the whole model in a dark maroon. So what's the point of this? Well, it's a very traditional principle, and it has to do with Well, what the hell is color cohesion and how does that work? Well, the aim of color cohesion is to create a palette of colors that contextualize each other and fit very well together. There are a lot of ways to go about this, but the way that we're going to do it is really simple. We're going to use one tone, just one, maroon, to tie all of the colors together. To get a better understanding of how this is going to work, let's look at our color palette. These colors already work decently, but they're just kind of lumped together. They don't quite look like they belong together. But if we overlay a bit of maroon over all of them, they all have a subtle tint that ties them together really well. This technique is done very often in traditional and digital painting. Let's look at this painting by Dave Greco. You can see in this picture that the Plague Marine has distinctly green armor with gold trim and his flesh and organs are that awesome gross reddish purple. But what if I told you that most of the colors in this painting are just shades of blue? Let's pick some of the shadow colors here on the green armor. And look at that, we get some lovely shades of blue. Well, what about the gold trim? It's gold, surely there's no blue in it, right? Oh, there is. And the same goes for most of these fleshy parts. Dave Greco has used very clever manipulations of color to trick the eye into thinking that these blues and grays are greens and golds, and that's exactly what we want to do with this maroon color. It's going to be incorporated into the shadow color of every part of the model, and I'll also mix it into most of the mid-tone colors to further the effect. Now we can see how one tone will really tie a piece together and give it that cohesion, but it's important to note that although I'll be mixing the maroon into the midtones and the shadows, I want to keep it mostly out of the highlights. This is because for our models to really pop, we need If there's maroon in everything, the model's going to look a bit too monochrome and not very vibrant. Going back to the drawing, you can see that the lighter areas have much clearer separation in color, and this helps bring depth and interest to the piece. You'll notice that this model is incomplete. The little nurgling that's supposed to be sitting at the front of the base is missing. I lost him. He's gone. Probably forever. Anyway, now we're moving on to the bronze trim. I'll be using the maroon as the shadow still, but I've blended it with black to make sure that the shadow area is a bit darker. I've chosen to do some non-metallic metal, which also isn't as hard to paint as you think. I'll do a video on it eventually. Probably soon. Subscribe so you don't miss that. Thank you.
Metals like copper and bronze don't rust. Instead, they oxidize, which is kind of the same, but not quite. All you need to know is that if the metal is orange, the rust is blue. I painted this blue oxidation around the rivets as well as in little corner areas where water might settle. Next was the skulls. I kept the maroon as the base shadow color, layered over a caramel color for the mid-tone, and then highlighted it with a bright tan. Simple, quick, effective. Warhammer models have way too many skulls to keep track of, so I accidentally missed like half of them, but I'll get them later. Alright, now it's finally time for my favorite part, the flesh. We've got a few tentacles on this model, as well as some cables covered in skin. Ugh. And oh boy, we get to paint two. We get to paint one Nurgling. That's better than none, I guess. So for these tentacles, cables, and Nurgling, as well as the face in a little while, I'm going to be blending some purple into the red tones that I mix, which brings us to our next trick, which is... By blending this cool bluish purple into the maroon and red tones, I'm giving these parts of the model a cooler appearance than the rest of the model, which is painted in warmer tones. Let me explain further. We all know that there are warm colors, red, orange, and yellow, and there are cool colors, purple, blue, and green. Green. The armor is green. Doesn't that mean it's a cool tone too? Well, not exactly. Within every color, whether cool or warm, there are subsets of that color that lean more in one direction or the other. The greens I used lean more yellow than they do blue. This gives the armor a warmer tone and feel. On the contrary, despite red being a warm tone, by adding a bluish purple to it, we can make it give off a cooler appearance. Now we have a gun to paint. I hate painting guns. I don't know why, there's just something about them. I mean, that's okay though. Not that many Warhammer models have guns, so... I think I'm gonna maybe start painting different models that aren't Warhammer. So I'm starting with the dark gray just to get some basic shading in. Then I'm going to go in and edge highlight and bring up the brightness with some lighter gray tones. In retrospect, I should have mixed a tiny bit of yellow into the gray to give it a warmer tone because I don't really want it to be a focal point. Instead, I used pure gray by just mixing black and white. Maybe I'll glaze it at the end. Now aside from the base, we're about done. Wait, is that... Oh my god, he's back! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I found him. I'm just gonna paint him up real quick. Same way I painted the other one. Okay, now for the base. I'm not gonna go too crazy. I just kept the maroon, washed it with some black, and highlighted all the maggots on the ground. With that, a quick coat of paint around the base room, and we're done. hope you enjoyed the video, and more importantly, I hope you learned something. Don't just forget the information in this video, try to apply it to your next model. And if you do, be sure to tag me if you post it so that I can see it. That's gonna be it, like if you liked, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.